You're listening to the Teak Nation Podcast, where we strive to educate, inspire, and entertain you with tips and lessons from frauders and friends of TKE. Hello, Teak Nation. It is Alex Swinson, and this is the Teak Nation Podcast. So glad to be with you. I am flying solo today. No Donnie, no guest, just raw, pure, unfiltered Alex, which uh, if I know our listening audience, I know gets you all very excited. So uh, you are welcome for that. Going to keep things pretty short, smooth, simple here this week. I know we are on the uh, the bi-weekly conversation. Had the opportunity and the pleasure to speak with Bruce Melcher a couple of weeks ago. I hope that you took time to listen to that. That is a man who has uh, just an, an incredible amount of passion for Teak, but also knowledge and stories that very few other individuals in this fraternity have. So if nothing else, it was a, an extreme pleasure, a great opportunity to be able to sit down with Bruce and have that um, have that conversation, but for you all as as listeners to be able to take in a little bit of that, and and I know some of you probably have had the pleasure of meeting Bruce on one or more than one occasion. Still a a mainstay at Conclave, a mainstay here in Indianapolis around the offices of the Grand Chapter. But when we think about this fraternity and what it means to to us, right, individually, personally, I think that shines through with Bruce, a man who has really given 65, 70 years of his life to this organization, and he's never gone away from it. We get a lot of people who they, they, they are teaks for four years in college. They volunteer for a couple of years at a college. They go away, right? They start families. They, they build their careers that, and and that's fantastic. And, And some of our best alumni and best volunteers and and most prestigious individuals have gone that route, but Bruce didn't. Bruce was on staff. He was the uh, traveling staff guy, as he talked about in the interview. He was the chief executive officer, the executive director at that point, and then he became grand. He went on the grand council. He's grand preetness. He's been involved with the nominations committee. That man has never taken a step away from Teak in his 80 plus years on this earth, so uh, I know i Got a little tangent there about old Bruce, but uh, it was it was really incredible to have him on, and uh, and it was his first podcast, so uh, have that feather in my cap as well, exposing a teak legend to the world of podcasting. Something I'll probably throw on the resume and and cherish for the rest of my life. Anyway, I want to talk about Rush today. I want to talk about recruitment. It is prime time Rush season, and uh, my plan two weeks from now is to a have Donnie back, of course, my uh, esteemed co host and uh, really the man that that keeps this train chugging along. Um, my plan for two weeks from now is to bring in some individuals from some of the chapters I'm getting ready to talk about. I want to talk about the groups that are doing recruitment and doing it the right way, doing it at a high level and doing it uh, at, a, at, a, at a rate that is unmatched by many other groups in Teak Nation because we need to celebrate those groups. We need to celebrate those individuals. We need to celebrate the guys who are out there putting in the work day in and day out to bring new members into Tall Cap Epsilon. And if you are a part of one of these groups, I can't thank you enough. If you are a part of a group that is not one of these groups, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to somebody, whether it's someone in one of these chapters, whether it's a volunteer, whether it's a staff member, to get on this track, to get on this plan that's going to help you grow and grow exponentially. And if you're a volunteer out there listening to this, which I know is is most of our listeners, figure out what these groups are doing, whether that's talking to Pete Dawson or talking to Santos Lara, whether it's talking to their chapter advisors, talking to your peers who work with these groups or going directly to the officers. Recruitment is, is, is very much able to be replicated. And what recruitment looks like on USC's campus is not what recruitment looks like on Franklin College's campus, my home chapter, an 1,100 man school, or not man, 1,100 person school in central Indiana. But the tactics, the principles, the ideas, the theories behind how recruitment takes place is the same at USC as it is at Franklin College, as it is at the University of Illinois, as it is at SUNY Farmingdale. I, I don't think Farmingdale is a SUNY school. I apologize for getting that wrong. It's already 
jazzed up to, to drop my SUNY knowledge. And then I blew it. SUNY Oswego. There you go. There's a SUNY school. Okay. With all that being said, again, I want to keep it moving because you're just hearing from me. Don't have Donnie here to fill in the gaps and uh, keep me under control. So I want to highlight the 10 best recruiting groups we have in TEAP right now. These are the 10 groups who have entered the most candidates into the system. This does not mean these individuals have been initiated yet. So there is an opportunity that some of these numbers could drop. I hope they don't. I hope if someone signed a bid, they are initiated into talk Kappa Epsilon. Right now, what we have is the candidate numbers. We have bids that have gone out and bids that have been accepted. I will also say there are groups that I know should be on this list that are not. Looking at you, Lambda, University of Wisconsin. Looking at you, Beta Zeta. Boys down in Ruston, Louisiana. Looking at a few others as well. I know there are groups that should be on this list that are not on this list, but this is the only data I have to go off of. This is what I know. They're not official till they're in the system. Without further ado, tied for 10th place with 27 new members this fall. Zio Omega Chapter, Virginia Tech, Gamma Lambda Expansion at San Diego State University. Longtime listeners of the program know that Donnie and I spent some time down with the, uh, the, good, the good men at San Diego State. About a month or so ago, I take absolutely no credit in what they've done. They probably just did the opposite of what I told them to do and recruited 27 new guys. But those are two groups in completely different situations. Yes, they're both on big campuses. One is on the East Coast. One is on the West Coast. Virginia Tech is a stalwart, a mainstay antique nation. They've been around forever. Gamma Lambda just came back last spring. They came back in the middle of COVID and started a, it wasn't even a colony. It was an expansion with eight guys who agreed to join Teak and build this thing from the ground up. They didn't have any Teak staff member on campus, was unable to do that due to COVID. Huge credit to Victor Casanova for building that core group of eight guys. Huge, huge credit to their, their alumni, Dave Behar, Jonathan Ratter, uh, Dean Ross Schessler, who's been very much involved. Cannot give them enough credit for keeping the train moving and keeping those eight guys focused. And for them to go out and get 27 new members this this fall, after starting with eight, it is a significant achievement. So a ton of credit there. And of course, the guys at Virginia Tech who just kill it every year in Rush, kill it every year with St. Jude. Um, they are one of our true shining examples of what a T chapter should be. And I know they're going to go out and recruit just as hard in the spring. So they got 27 guys now. I wouldn't be surprised if that number is 40 or 45 come April or May. Um, but it's 27 right now. So that's what we're going off of. In eighth place, Epsilon, Iowa State University. None of these uh, groups should really surprise anyone out there, but Epsilon is at the uh, in the eighth position, did an incredible job with Rush, as they always do. And we talk about mainstay chapters, right? The, the groups that are always in the top 10 recruitment rankings that are always up there with St. Jude, doing things the right way. Epsilon is, is just as much, if not more, a shining example than the guys at Virginia Tech. In seventh place with 31 new members, Kai Chapter. University of Washington out there in Seattle. Kai has been stacking big recruitment class after big recruitment class after big recruitment class. They started the year just under 100 total members. They're going to be up. I wouldn't be surprised that they're close to 150 by the end of the year. So a huge fall rush for Kai. Massive credit for them. And then right above them, you know, to the detriment of, of, of the guys at Kai, the Alpha Gamma chapter at Washington State University, Little Apple Cup, cross-state rivalry there. Alpha Gamma at Washington State with 37 new members. Uh, great to see them in the top 10. Great to see them continue to recruit at a high level. Uh, beautiful house there in Pullman. Good friends of mine, Kyle Erdman and Danny Kloppenstein, both alumni from the Alpha Gamma chapter. Uh, Kyle recently uh, stepped down as Board of Advisors Chairman, so love you, Kyle. Um, but Washington State University there in the sixth spot. We do have a tie for fifth place. Alpha Rho, University of Rhode Island, Delta Gamma, University of Connecticut. A couple of Northeast groups there. A couple of new groups to the, uh, to the rankings here. The guys there at UConn have turned things around significantly in the last few years. There was a time uh, three or four years ago when, when I don't know if they had 38 guys in their chapter. And now they're putting 38 up there in a fall class. They're, uh, they're not going to stop either. They're going to keep pushing and they are going to get over a hundred. They are going to uh, put big, big numbers on the board this year. So really cool to see them. Um, great pizza there in New Haven, Connecticut as well. It is, it is 
my hope and my goal to one day have an opportunity to both explore the Delta Gamma chapter at UConn and then explore New Haven and go eat a bunch of pizza. Um, and then of course, University of Rhode Island there with 38 new members as well at Alpha Rho continuing uh, to stack big classes one on top of another. And that's what we love to see. We love to see groups that go out that go get 30, 35, 40 guys for two, three, four, five, six, 10, 15 years in a row. That's how you become a 120 man chapter, 150 man chapter. That's how you build a legacy on your campus is by going out and not just doing it once, not just doing it a couple years in a row, but becoming that dynasty. And the guys at Rhode Island are certainly on their way there. In third place with 41 new members, Beta Phi, Louisiana State University. Go Tigers, yes, must be said. Uh, again, you want to talk about groups on the way up. That group at LSU five or six years ago was down under 20. And now they're putting up 40, 50-man recruitment classes every single year. That is significant. And again, that is another group that recruits hard in the spring. That's another group. I mean, we could have five, six, seven, 10 chapters, over 50 initiates this year, which hasn't happened I don't know. And I don't know how long you have to look back. Bruce probably knows. Look back at the teak history books, but um, LSU rep in the SEC and then right above them in the second spot, also from the SEC, also from the Southeast Beta Lambda at Auburn University. That's a chapter that has worked their butts off in the last two or three years to get where they are now. I think they were in the 30 range, 35 range last year. They have 46 new members on the books right now. And they are going to keep pushing as well. They'll be over 50 easily. And if anyone from Auburn out there is listening, I give you all a ton of credit. I know we've spent some time with staff members down there. I know there's a lot of volunteers who have dumped a lot of time and energy and effort into growing that chapter. And for them to uh, top the the recruitment board here, just shy of the number one spot, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, something to really, really be proud of and really, really be excited about. And then in the first spot, and, and I say this because there's a little bit of uh, – uh, there, there's something here with, with, with the guys here at Boise State at the new ADA chapter that they were able to initiate a class at the beginning of this summer of 24 men, and then they've stacked 35 men on top of that. So they're at 59 right now, 35 from Fall Rush, right, which is still puts them in the top five, 59 total new members for the year. And uh, I mean, when we talk about groups that that are growing rapidly and growing exponentially, they are at or near the top of the list there and uh, in Boise. So tons of credit, credit where it's due to all 10 of those groups. Who's, you know, who's who's knocking on the doorstep? Uh, you got the guys at Reno with 24 guys at University of South Dakota with 24 Westchester, the Mu Alpha Colony. They're getting ready to charter. They have 23 University of New Hampshire, University of Maine, University of Minnesota, Duluth, all over 20. Guys at Beta Sigma, that's a deferred campus, so they're going to put in a lot more work in the spring. I know they're at 16, so I expect them to jump into the, the top five, top three, right, top one, potentially. The guys at Lambda, right, we talked about them earlier. They did 51 initiates last year. They're already at 35, so so much incredible recruiting being done across Teak Nation, and, and I hope the takeaway from the last 15, 20 minutes or so is – you know, yes, these campuses are large. These are major college conferences. These are groups that uh, are able to exist uh, on campuses with robust Greek systems and a lot of support. But that doesn't mean that if you're on a campus of 1,500 people, you can't take the same principles that Beta Lambda applied to go out and get 46 and go get your own 20 guys. Go get your own 18 guys. Go get whatever number it is that's going to put you over the top because, I'll say it again, the principles, the theories behind how we recruit or why we recruit, sorry, and the tactics behind how we recruit, those are transferable. You can replicate those on all 220 campuses across this country that have a teak chapter colony on them, and you can find success. So if you're looking for that extra nudge, I just gave you 10 chapters plus a few others that you can go to for that information. I just gave you groups where you can find out who their chapter advisor is or who their, their grand province advisor is, who their board chair is, who their rush chair is, who their pretness is, and ask them, how did you do it? How did you get 46? How did you get 38? How did you get 21? Because that's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we all get better. That's how that rising tide raises all of the ships. I also 
We'll continue to advocate for fired up training. We have over 560 men who have been fired up certified. That number should be over a thousand. That number should be over 1500. There's no reason that every single member in Teak should not go take that training because it's going to teach you something. It, you might not, you might not walk away with six pages of notes, but you'll walk away with a couple of thoughts with a couple of ideas you had not previously had. And those thoughts and ideas might be the difference between 12 new members and 20 new members. So the fired up training, teak.org slash fired up, cannot emphasize that enough. I cannot put that out there enough times. And I'll tell you this, we have about 1500 new members in Teak right now, as we sit here today, 1500 candidates, all of those guys should be taking fired up training. All of those guys should be going and getting certified because they are your new recruiters. Those are the men that should be going out on campus, getting more freshmen, more sophomores, more guys to join Teak. They are your best recruiters. They are enthusiastic. They are energetic. They just joined something that they now want to be a part of and contribute to. Go get them fired up certified. Go get them that experience. You don't even have to teach them how to recruit. Fired up will teach them how to recruit. You just got to follow up and set them loose. So if you've not done that yet, or if you haven't thought about that, week one, new member education, we're doing fired up training. And then you're going to go out next week, week two, and you're going to go find five more guys for your pledge class or 10 more guys, or 20 more guys. There's no reason in a 40-man pledge class why you can't go out and find five more guys amongst those 40. Get them certified, get them coached up, get them trained up. It is only going to benefit your chapter. All the problems that we hear about, can't pay dues, don't have enough money for St. Jude, our social events suck, right? No one wants to hang out with us. You know what solves those problems? New members, more members, more men. It'll take care of, uh, I don't want to say it'll take care of everything. It'll take care of a lot of those things. So, if you're maybe falling behind a little bit in rush, falling behind a little bit in recruitment, now's the time. Second rush. It is not too late to take a second fall rush class. It is not too late to take a second class. It is not too late to start thinking about spring rush either. Now's the time though. Don't sit on your hands. Don't just sit around and hope things get better. Make the changes you need to make. Pivot. Move on. That is all for this episode of the Teak Nation podcast. Again, wanted to keep it quick. Wanted to keep it fast paced, wanted to keep it focused on recruitment. Sorry that I couldn't bring anyone else in to talk. Uh, major failure on my part, and I'm sure you're equally as disappointed, but we will have guests in two weeks. I can assure you of that. Uh, and they'll be good. I don't know who they are yet, but they'll be good. I, 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 I'm, I am positive of that, even if it's just Dobby. Please subscribe to the Teak Nation podcast. Go smash the like button. I haven't had a chance to say smash the like button in a while. Go smash the like button. Tell a friend, right? Do whatever you need to do so that you are the very first person to find out when there is a new episode available of the Teague Nation podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for humoring me for the last 20 minutes. Hope this was beneficial. Hope this was fun. I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye.